Sixth Asia Pacific Conference. I'm Xin Wei from University of Science Malaysia. Today I would like to present to you my project entitled Visual Method in Capturing the Health Determinants. So let me introduce to you the environmental risk to health refers to all the physical, chemical, and biological factors external to a person and all related behaviors, but excluding those natural environments that cannot reasonably be modified. A recent systematic review claimed that environmental risk bear a considerable large proportion of global burden of diseases, with 23% of all death and 22% of disease burden in daily adjusted life years. Of the environmental contaminants, air pollution is a major environmental risk to health worldwide. What is determinants of health? WHO defined as the range of personal, social, economic and environmental factors which determine the health status of individuals or populations. So bear in mind, environment is one of the social determinants of health. One of the widely used models of social determinants of health was proposed by Dalbury and Whitehead more than two decades ago, with the personal characteristics, age, sex, and constitutional factors being the core model, and these layers extend further. We have lifestyle factors, social and economic or community networks, living and working conditions. Not to forget, on top of that, there's a larger determinant, which is the general social, economic, cultural, and environmental conditions. These layers can actually protect or harm us. Environmentals is sometimes very hard to be seen. In today's world, with fast developing technology, we need to talk about social determinants of health in a meaningful way that people could understand. Not only people in the field, but also the policy makers. Robert Wood Johnson Foundation actually documented their finding on a better way to find, to talk about uh, social determinants of health. And another good example will be the work done by uh, Future Health Systems. Uh, a photo voice exploration in the Indian Sundarbans. This is one of the photographs documented in the, their findings. Uh, here shows that uh, this is a very common scene that uh, to see both humans and animals bath in the same pond, they share the same water supply. They use the water for to boil rice, cleaning utensils. This is probably due to the lack of awareness of the uh, sanitation and also probably absence of other water sources nearby. So in some of the circumstances, visual methods may invoke a more convincing evidence of the phenomenon of interest. Therefore, this paper aims to describe the use of photography to capture the social determinants of health. By using visual methods, uh, I use a handful of uh, photographs as the data to explore the real life conditions. These digital images speak for itself. And uh, I took these photographs in the country of Nepal uh, during a journey I undertook uh, in the year of 2014 to depict the impact of rapid industrialization and urbanization of uh, all the developing city. So first of all, let me introduce to you where is Nepal. It is the least urbanized uh, country, also the fastest urbanizing country in South Asia. Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal and the largest municipality of Nepal. If any one of you have been to Kathmandu, Tamil is a popular tourist area. This is the first photograph taken in the Tamil street, whereby we can see cloth, religious masks, fruits, herbs and spices sold along the street. While walking down the street, it is very common to see the Kathmandu city dwellers wearing masks. So the irony in the picture shows how the traditional mask, usually used for religious practices, was sold along the street, but this modern man has reinvented the mask to protect himself from the environment. This actually reflects that the community awareness of the hazard and eager to protect their health. On the next day, I travel for the south around an eight hour drive to a place called uh, Lumbini. This is a photograph taken on the midday at the Lumbini gate. Lumbini is the birthplace of the Lord Buddha and being listed as the World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. Upon arrival, I felt um, strangled and smarted by the dusty air from the lorries and the buses, fine particles due to the roadworks, also the suffocating smell of the animal excrement. At the last day of my journey, during the return trip to the Tribuan International Airport in Kathmandu, a smoky fog with dark smoke permeated the sky. It attracted my attention. 
There is actually an ongoing funeral ceremony in the temple besides the, the uh, this is the Bhagmati River and this is the temple. So the tour guide explained to me that a traditional belief among the Hindu that um, a person's body composed of five elements, the earth, fire, water, air and sky. So when the cremation of the disease could help the people to return to return this body to these five elements, and also when we scatter the ashes into the holy river, can complete the cycle of reincarnation. So I stopped by for a moment and was very actually very excited to witness and experience a long practice cultural heritage. However, just within seconds, an indescribable strong aroma shot my senses. Probably the blended aroma from the burning, from the smell of the burning flesh, the pungent odor of the urine and the sewage, the overwhelming stench from the rotten rubbish nearby, and also the sweet smell of the burning incense. Let me proceed to my discussion. Air quality in Nepal ranked 177 out of 178 countries, only slightly better than Bangladesh. Kathmandu Valley with its topos basin shape, uh, shape topographic features is actually vulnerable to air pollution. On top of that, hazardous urbanization, overuse of modern yet inefficient combustion engines, emissions from the factories, the cars, the lorries, and domestic heating actually worsen the air pollution, which poses a significant threat to the well-being of the citizens. We could see here air pollution, as we all know, the air pollutants has a direct impact to the human health. But it also has an indirect impact to the quality of life of the human being. From another point of view, we could see that polluted air may affect the tourism, leading to an impact to the economic and development. Also, threatens the employment and also source of income. Unemployment, another social determinant of health, actually will be the intermediate or the indirect consequence of the air pollution to aggravate the poverty issues. As we all know, poverty is actually closely connected to the human health. If no new policies being implemented by the year of 2025, the biggest environmental cause of premature death is anticipated to be due to outdoor air pollution, leaving behind unsafe water supply and poor sanitation. Many diseases have significant link with air pollution. To name some here, cardiovascular diseases, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, stroke, lung cancer, above uh, acute lower respiratory tract infections, we have some others, cataracts, cardiovascular diseases, and also uh, skin cancers, lung cancers. The World Health Organization actually introduced this conceptual framework of social determinants of health. The end product will be the health equity and also the health well-being. We could see that this uh, end product of our health is actually influenced or determined by the intermediary determinants, which is the material circumstances, our living and working conditions could affect our health, Behaviors and biological factors also could affect our health, and our psychosocial social factors to affect our health. And then for this intermediary determinants, it actually determined by the social economic position. Our social class, our gender, and ethnicity could affect the intermediary determinants and also therefore affect the end product of our health. On top of all these determinants, we have the larger, largest determinants, which is the social, economic, uh, and political governance. So a good political governance with the policies favoring green environment could actually give a positive impact to our health. For example, the macroeconomic policies, social policies like in labor, market, housing, land, public policies, cultural and societal values. So we could actually see from a future review that the policy government implement uh, policies to enforce the clean vehicles and also they update the modern technology, they, they, they are improving using a better ways of disposal. For the culture and societal values, they are actually introducing electric crematorium for the local culture settings. And uh, this is actually the framework that actually we could imply for the social determinants of health. Looking into a wider perspective on the global governance and collaboration, ratification of Kyoto Protocol, being the first international agreement that actually targets to reduce uh, greenhouse uh, gas emissions, actually that qualified Nepal to participate in the clean development mechanism. So biogas as a neoliberal development in Nepal actually reduces the dependency of the firewood as a source of energy and also decreases the domestic carbon emissions. 
Another emerging issues of uh, transboundary environment, uh, environmental problems, which is the air pollution due to the smoke generated from deforestation and agricultural activities. Just an example, the annual burning events in Indonesia uh, created a haze phenomenon in Southeast Asia. For example, mid of last year, the smoke pollution blanketed uh, the Southeast Asia region, causing the air quality to reach hazardous level in uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, and also Thailand. Um, in my conclusion, I would like to say that the photographs witness the poor health outcome and also the health inequity uh, for helping us to understand the social determinants of health. So with the aim to improve the population health, global governance and collaboration is very important. Also that the rapid urbanization and economic growth need to strike a balance with the population health in order to foster a sustainable urban development. Uh, we actually could see that the visual uh, materials, we could recommend that using visual materials to share the information and a bridge to allow people to talk about social determinants of health. Uh, actually, moreover, uh, not only to the uh, people working in the field, also with the policy makers. These are my references and that's all for my presentation today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, comments? Thank you so much. Um, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Singh Bilfo.